Hi, everyone. My name is Brian Allerbrock, and I'm going to present image management and analysis in cassava base. So first things first, uh, before you even get images into cassava base, the first step is to make sure that collection goes smoothly. The recommended way to collect images is to use the Fieldbook app, and more specifically, the photo trait available in the Fieldbook app. When you take images this way, uh, the Fieldbook app lets you take as many images as you want of a given plot or plant and then saves the images with the standard file name structure, which you can see here. The files will start with your unique ID, and then whatever uh, trait name you gave your trait, then the number going up in sequence as you take more images under the same trait, and then a timestamp. There are kind of two key things here uh, while taking images uh, this way. The first is to make sure that the ID, which is your unique identifier in Fieldbook, is a valid observation unit from Cassava Base. Um, when you download layouts directly from Cassava Base, or if you use the Brappy import tool, that will be guaranteed. Um, but in case you're doing it any other way, or just so you know, you know, that includes a plot name, a plant name, a stock, any type of stock name, including even tissue samples, or if you're importing by Brappy, it also includes the, the IDs. An example here would be this uh, 2022 AYT plot uh, has the plot name as its beginning ID, then underscore root photo as the trait name, one, then the timestamp. The other key thing here, which I unfortunately didn't put in the slide, is that uh, it's important that the trait name not contain an underscore itself. Um, otherwise, parsing the file name uh, then becomes a problem because the database will split apart these different fields using the underscores, working backwards from the end. All right, so once you have your images taken and the file names are in that format, you can go ahead and upload them. The upload is found under the Manage menu, and then Phenotyping, and then in the upper right-hand corner of that page, you'll see the upload images option. Once you open that dialog, you'll see the two formats to choose from. The first images is just individual simple images. The second is a bit more complicated and you can find out more about it by clicking on image file format. It'll tell you a little bit about uh, what I just told you for the file name structure if you're uploading images alone. If you're doing images with associated phenotypes, you'll need this header in a spreadsheet file, and then you will include rows of uh, trait values, as well as the image name that's linked to that trait value. One advantage here is that as long as you have the correct image name, um, it doesn't matter uh, what the structure of it is, but it does have to correspond to a valid uh, trait value and trait name um, that was taken along with the photo. And then those images will have to be zipped into a zip file and uploaded alongside the spreadsheet. So, so that second option has existed for a while, but the individual image upload format is new. So let me walk you through what that looks like. Um, once you choose some files, in this case, five files selected, You'll see a preview of the first one, a count of however many other ones are there, and then you'll see the verify and store options at the bottom. You want to go ahead and click verify to uh, have the database parse those file names and uh, tell you whether they are indeed valid observation unit names or IDs. Uh, in this case, you'll get a green box like this, or if there's anything wrong, you'll get an error message telling you what's wrong. Once you have that verification complete, you can go ahead and click on store. And the workflow will give you uh, continuous feedback as it uploads the images one by one. The downside to this is that, you know, when you're uploading hundreds and hundreds at a time, this can take a while. You might want to set it and forget it, come back uh, a while later. Um, but the advantage is if it does get interrupted, you'll get some feedback 
um, on which ones completed the upload, which ones didn't, and you'll have a smaller set to upload afterwards. And you'll know what's going on in the meantime uh, whenever you check in. So once you have your images uploaded, you can then go to the toolbar uh, in the beginning where it says search and head over to the image search. That's the handiest way to uh, sort through what, what images are in the database and assemble a set uh, to look at side by side or whatever you want to do with them. The image search has quite a few different options for criteria. Um, if you are using the field book uh, to take your images, often the file name itself has a lot of info information in there. So you might search by descriptors in this first box or probably the second most useful one here is uh, searching by submitter. This has an autocomplete. So if you start typing someone's name, it'll help you um, find that person's name in the database and search by them. Prasad here has uploaded a whole lot of images. Uh, so I'm sure this will return a lot of search results. And this is what they, the beginning of them at least would look like. So once you have your search results, you can select how many you want to show at a time in the table. You'll get a little thumbnail, the file name, submitter name, associations with stocks and projects, as well as the uh, trait value if you uploaded the images via the associated trait spreadsheet. And finally, so once you, once you have sorted through and searched through images, you can click on an image file name to take you to the image detail page. On the image detail page is where you can do some more manipulation. If you need to edit your image name or description, or if you uploaded an image in error, you can edit or delete at the very top of the page. Below that, you'll have the option to view the image in many different sizes from thumbnail up to the original image size. And then Maybe the more, most powerful feature is further down, you'll see associated stocks. So you can click through to the plot that that image was taken uh, from. And then from the plot, you can click through to the accession, uh, which the plot is an example or an instance of. Um, and in each of those steps in the hierarchy, you'll see an accumulation of images. So all the images of the plot or all the images of all the plots of the accession. Um, and then, you know, by the time you get to the accession level, that can be quite a few images and you can select uh, out of a table and view them side by side if you want to see photos of roots of an accession from different trials, um, how they compare. So that's, that's quite a, a handy feature. Not the most powerful though. So this is, this is all the sort of basic image operations, but the most advanced feature is image analysis. You'll find image analysis in the menu bar under analyze image analysis. And this is kind of a catch all of all the image features in the database. So at the top of this image analysis page, you'll see uh, that same upload that we looked at before for uploading images. You'll have a, you'll see the search table for searching them. And once you've searched out a set that you want to do something with, you'll see select boxes next to the images. You can select a set that you want to analyze and then come down to the second, the bottom half of the page where you'll see these features. So once you have your set selected, you can pick out an analysis service from the, the drop down, And then based on the analysis service, you'll be able to pick out a trait uh, that corresponds to it. So if you're using the necrosis analysis service that provides scores for CBSD. And finally, submit. And once you submit, you'll see the same progress bar feedback that you saw for the image upload that shows you uh, the numbers of images that have been submitted and then uh, counts as and uh, completes as those uh, results come back. Um, once you have all your image analysis results back, it'll build a table for you like this, showing you the, the original image side by side with the analyzed image the score that was produced. And if, like in this case, you have multiple images of the same stock, then it will provide you with an average score 
or a mean across uh, however many uh, images you you submitted. So I know that's a common workflow for CPSD to take images of many roots of a given plot or plant. Uh, this will help you calculate the mean CBSD score. And then at the bottom here, you'll see a save button. If you're satisfied with how it all looks, then when you save, you'll, you'll have those results saved in the database along with any other uh, phenotypic scores uh, for those stocks. And that's the summary of uh, all the existing features, but we have some exciting stuff coming up. Uh, we just completed, and I think it will come out later this week, uh, this image analysis usage plot, um, which was requested by uh, the folks at Macquarie, Solomon and Sumba, and other members of the team. And actually, big thanks to them for helping develop a lot of these tools. Uh, all the image analysis features we built have been in conjunction uh, with their, their services. Um, this is, this is coming out later this week and it will provide a histogram um, showing the number of images submitted um, to, to keep it, uh, have a nice visualization of, of how the tool is being used. Uh, also coming up is going to be the, the ability to upload images of trials rather than just stocks. Um, they'll be associated with the trial displayed on the trial detail page and give you something to look at besides you know barcodes of the trial uh, when you're when you're looking at the trial and you know eventually um, maybe uh, fill in the gap between uh, you know individual root image analysis and drone imagery analysis you'll be able to have photos of of trials um, even if they're not drone imagery uh, and finally, uh, looking a little further ahead, um, we'd like to look at direct image upload using the, the breeding API. Um, we already have uh, some image calls implemented in cassava base for getting and putting images. And now that uh, the Fieldbook app has the breeding API implemented as well, at least for, for data and layout import, it would be easy to imagine uh, going ahead and exporting images you've taken with the Fieldbook app directly from the app to Cassava Base without the intermediate step of selecting them uh, via the user interface. And then finally, um, the, the image analysis that we're doing uh, with Macarera University and I think a couple of local services have all kind of been customized structures, but uh, we'd like to put together a working group to develop a, a graphic calls for image analysis specifically um, to make it more generalizable and maybe connect to, to more possibilities out there for image analysis. All right, I, I hope I hit about the right time there. That is all I've got. Thank you everyone for, for listening and please let me know if you have any questions.